today's topic um, is about the stomach acid and immune system. And um, I've been a little fired up the last few days, so hopefully this topic or presentation doesn't come off uh, overly aggressive. <laughs> My goal is to be grounded and um, passionate, but grounded, sorry, I hit the stand. Passionate, but grounded and not, I don't know, and not overly, um, yeah, fired up. So passionate is good, but overly fired up is not the best way to present. So this is a topic, the stomach acid is a huge topic, is one that, um, it really, really does actually fire me up because um, it's it's an often prescribed medication. So I'm not really going to talk about the medication too, too much, but stomach acid um, <clears throat> medications and proton pump inhibitors and acids, all of that are intended to um, block what we think is an acid um, that could be refluxing up into the throat or the lower esophagus and causing burning. Um, it could, um, you know, it's prescribed when there's pain, when there's just that burning sensation in the esophagus, when a person's lying down and they are um, in pain because of acid burning their esophagus, um, when there's a lot of burping, sometimes it can even, um, lead to uh, sinus irritation and a postnasal drip. So this stomach acid um, really has a huge impact and just a lot of gas, bloating. So often a patient will go to the medical doctor and have a prescription, which is usually, you know, just a little bit of a chat, what's going on, what are your symptoms? And then there's a proton pump inhibitor prescribed. And I'm okay with that. That part I'm okay with, um, but the, proton pump inhibitor or the medication is intended for short-term use and often patients will be on this for like years. <clears throat> it's intended to give a space, give a little bit of relief to the patient because often these symptoms can be quite painful, quite uncomfortable, affect sleep and prior to the quarantine everyone has to go to work, um, most of us have to go to work and if you, you don't have to go to work and there's children at home there's a lot on your plate. <clears throat> so um, sleep is of the utmost importance and so to go on these medications in order to get a good quality sleep, sure, but that is the opportunity that gives us a little bit of space to dig deeper to figure out why this is actually happening and for the majority of the time it's not really that confusing of an issue, it's a variety of lifestyle factors that totally, totally impact the system and are resulting, uh, the, the result of that imbalance in your life is the stomach. So Sandra has joined us. Hi, Sandra. Um, if anyone feels inclined, uh, feel free to post that you are uh, watching with Brio, a watch, hosting, host a watch party. Um, these videos are intended to just be of service during the quarantine, you know, we're, we're here. Um, right now it's gonna be four times a week. Um, at first we came out and it was about the first two weeks we did five, but now it's four times a week we're gonna be here. And yeah, we're just trying to dispel um, myths, trying to help with the immune system. And I chose this topic because it's a big one. It can be um, corrected while at home or totally, totally exasperated. So the medications used for stomach acid Yes, they help, um, they provide some relief, but for me, they're just providing a little bit of time and space so we can dig a little deeper. The problem being is that not a lot of people will do the digging deeper and then um, they're not actually instructed to, they're not instructed um, as to how dangerous these medications can be in the long term. Um, and they're not really instructed about it, so they just keep using it. And I am not certain if even um, medical doctors are aware of the implications. There, there is a domino effect. So our digestive system is an intricate, intricate process, which starts, you know, with the thought of food. It starts with chewing food, saliva, um, the choice of food, and and it's an intricate process. So if we disrupt one part of it, all of it has going forward um, it will all be affected and so the body is 
is um so kelly's just joined hi kelly the body is a whole unit and you cannot compartmentalize and just think i'm just gonna treat the stomach it doesn't work like that because just treating the stomach has an impact on the entire system and i'll go over that so oftentimes um the reason why these medications are prescribed is that it's an inconvenience to look through lifestyle changes Oftentimes, um, I think everyone has a, a different kind of weak spot or go-to spot, and um, mine is lungs, it's skin, it's my gut. For other people, it could be cardiovascular. Um, other people, it's nervous system. Some people, their go-to reactions are their stomach. And so, you know, every time they get sick, it'll hit their stomach nervousness will hit their stomach, stress will hit their stomach, and so that's their kind of go-to um, stress processing. And when that's the case, it, it really, you have to look at the mental emotional, you have to look at what emotions are, are being processed or not being processed, you have to look at sleep factors, energy factors, stress factors, dietary factors, and it seems like a lot, but once you do just a quick like check, with a practitioner usually, um, you can figure out where is this imbalance occurring from and what's going on in my life right now that is really kind of making this, this these symptoms of pain and burning and acid coming to the forefront. So a lot of times it's stress. Um, it could be you know a big project at work and all of a sudden you've had many projects and it was fine. And then this last one, it was just perhaps too much or maybe there was too much pressure. Um, it could be for a lot of students. It could be um, final exams, trying to get into universities. It could be um, you know being with the kids or just even having kids, um, just that kind of shock to that new world, your new world. Um, it could be any stressor. It could be, you know, taking care of loved ones. It could be the shock of what we're going through now, the, the self-quarantine, um, possible layoffs, unemployment, um, thinking and spinning into future thoughts, watching the news too much being more indoors, not being able to kind of release our stressors, being on devices more so. So all of that are just examples. There's many, many more. Um, and those stressors, uh, sorry, food, poor, poor food choices or food choices that may be good but don't suit that person because each person's digestive system is totally individual. So um, having foods, but you know, the, the food choices is perhaps not the greatest. Um, I'll, I'll give an easy, easy example. I had one patient, she came in, um, I don't know, she must have been like 27 weeks pregnant or something, maybe 30, um, and she was having like a cup of fruit yogurt, um, I think before dinner, uh, that would be one of her snacks to tide her over. So we did her whole detailed intake. She had no real symptoms prior to being pregnant. Uh, health has always never really been an issue. Um, I did just a quick kind of check in with her with what's going on, what are you eating, timings of things, and it was very clear through our intake, I can't remember the details exactly, but that yogurt cup was new and it was um, dairy and she hadn't really had a lot of dairy, but she thought and was told it was a great snack. So we took that dairy out, that yogurt cup, and switched it with something else, and her heartburn went away. So as the baby was growing um, in her uterus, um, she thought the diaphragm was pushing up, and it was, and it could be the, you know, uh, contributing to the um, acid reflux, but it was also a poor choice of food for her. So not to say that that yogurt is bad, but for her, she just couldn't break it down, and it was not the greatest choice. Um, other patients, you know, there could be a lot of fast food, um, in and out grabbing of meals, uh, and even at this time, many of the fast food takeout places I believe are still open. I haven't really checked. I never really checked, but um, I haven't checked because I'm not driving around, um, but I believe they're open. You can drive through and gra grab something. I know in our plaza, um, still some of the places are open. Um, for takeout only and you know maybe it's like a greasier fast food pizza 
um, and so I'm back with um, some alcohol or a pop and all of that is just it's not um, what the stomach can break down maybe as over consumption of the pizza uh, normally you could take like one or two slices but having up to four just because um, it was a Friday or it's today whatever it is um, and it was too much for the system and that's just it's a dishonoring of the stomach because you know there's too much uh, food that it couldn't break down but if there was one um, piece and or two pieces, whatever um, the body could take, you know, it's a different story. So food choices really um, is a huge part of honoring the stomach, the mental emotional too. When you look at the mental emotional, um, <clears throat> it's something um, that uh, is, um, you cannot digest the outside world. So it's something that is going on perhaps in your life that you're unable to digest mentally, emotionally, and then the stomach just really, um, it, it can't process it. The nervous system is, that's your weaker point um, and it, it can't process it. And that's where you'll maybe store a lot of your unprocessed stress or what you can't digest will be stored in the stomach. And the reason why uh, it feels like a stomach acid burn is that that cell reaction, so the cells in the stomach lining to make stomach acid, to convert it to a stomach acid, it takes almost the most energy in the body to do that conversion. And so when the body is really, really stressed, um, it has to kind of retract things that aren't of utmost importance for our survival. And a lot of times that stomach acid um, production is, is uh, compromised. <clears throat> so what happens is that you don't have a signal. So there's less actual stomach acid being produced. And what happens is, is there's no signal that you're breaking down food because when there's an, a proper acid amount of uh, stomach acid, the esophagus will close as it's chewing and breaking down food because that acid trigger shuts the esophagus sphincter and then no food um, kind of goes up into the throat and so when that acid level is not proper in the stomach then more um, can more opportunity to burn be, comes through the throat because that sphincter doesn't have that reflux to close so are we having a burn? Yes. Is it acidic? You can't actually say that because we don't know what um, a, an acidic burn feels like. It also, a basic burn also very much burns. What's happening is that there's digestive juices that are um, coming up and it's really, really painful. Often that happens because the stomach acid levels are not imbalanced and so the sphincter won't close. <clears throat> so at that point, um, it feels acidic and we tell the medical doctors that this is acidic and then what's happened is a proton pump inhibitor is usually prescribed to suppress the stomach acid altogether or as much as possible and then that burning goes away because there's no... Um, there's no digestive kind of reflux into the lower esophagus. And so um, when that stomach acid is not being produced, it's often because of stressors. That stressor is often mental, emotional. Um, it could be lack of sleep. It could be just the poor, poor food choices. And even if it's a healthy choice, it may not suit your particular system but it could be a poor food choice and then an overconsumption of that poor food choice. So I'm not saying not to have like, you know, a cheat meal or whatever it is or a treat meal, <clears throat> but sometimes when we haven't had it for a while, we just kind of go off the benders and, and just really go at it and have as much as we want and the stomach just can't break that down. Um, age is a factor too because uh, stomach acid levels will alter as we get older and so we have to be even more diligent at keeping our stomach acid levels in alignment. So does that make sense? Does that make sense to everyone? I just kind of really rambled into what stomach acid levels um, could, what could impact stomach acid levels. For some, it could even be the thyroid because the thyroid is intimately linked to creating um, stomach acid too. Um, so it could be an underlying thyroid issue that is not being addressed. It could be a nervous issue, system issue that's not being addressed. Um, there's many other factors um, 
that are at play, but oftentimes there's just one medication that's given and um, it, it's just it's just really just treating the weed. When you think of the garden analogy of treatment, um, it's just treating the weed and underneath the soil is not really doing the best and we've just treated the weed really. And so um, underneath that proton pump inhibitor, there's a whole host of imbalance going on still. So it's really important to honor the stomach, to make sure that we try to slow down in our life, to sleep properly, process our emotions, and make food choices that um, really don't throw our gut into a huge, huge uh, turmoil situation. And if you want to have you know, a fast food meal with a family or whatnot, it may have to be portioned out um, instead of Perhaps, you know, uh, a, a couple years ago, you could eat like four or five pieces of pizza and it was no issue. So why is the stomach acid there? Why is it so important? And why is it so dangerous and linked to the immune system to just suppress it? So if you think about it, um, our body is primed um, 24 seven to protect us uh, immune system wise. And so, the pH level of the stomach acid is intended to kill anything that we take in from the outside world, whether it's a bacteria, a virus, a fungus, or any other exogenous source that comes in from breath, or from consuming food. So when we're um, eating, when we're breathing, um, when we swallow, we are taking in bacteria and parasites and viruses, but at a high level, optimum level of stomach acid will kill, that. one of the purposes of it is to kill the bacteria, to kill the virus, to kill the parasite, to kill the fungus, um, and any other consumption of um, something that shouldn't be in this the digestive system. So when we take in food, an optimal level of stomach acid um, needs to be there in order to protect us from the get-go. So already the saliva helps to do that as well. Chewing helps to do that. The nasal passages helps to do that. It helps to filter our air. But when it comes to the mouth and um, taking in food, there is a lot of bacteria and um, the possibility of parasites in our food, um, sometimes even in the water, even <clears throat> especially living in North America, it's, we're not you know exempt from it and so the stomach acid is really a huge protection so now you take a person who's on a proton pump inhibitor and it's been that way for a long long time I would suspect that they're far more susceptible to viruses bacteria and fungus and when that is not being killed in the stomach, it can set up shock in the gut, which is the dangerous part. So when it actually like enters deeper into our system and now we have a foreign bacteria, virus, fungus entering our system that has not been um, addressed at the stomach level and it gets deeper into the system, that is the dangerous part. So taking a proton pump inhibitor is uh, not a benign, um, medication to be on it is very serious so it doesn't have immediate consequences but when you look at and break down what occurs with the digestive system to me it is very dangerous it should only be used short term to help a person get back on track and during this quarantine if you're on uh, proton pump inhibitors i do not recommend to come off of them by yourself it should be guided it should be treated um, if you can get in with your medical doctor do it with them if you are a patient at brio you can do it with us but i do not recommend at all this is not a facebook live to have you stop your medications that's not how it works because that will also put you in a highly highly stressed state and you have to know the underlying reason of why it was prescribed in the first place then that can be corrected and then you can start to wean off of it as uh, the underlying issues are corrected. But does that make sense? Um, if you understand what I mean about the pH of the stomach and how that has to be optimal, um, throw up some likes, some, some hearts. Uh, if you have any questions about that, feel free to just pop them on right now. That's the first point of stomach acid is 
the protection from the outside world. Anything airborne, our stomach really, really protects from it. So Nina's on and she gave a thumbs up, uh, which is awesome. Nice to have you, Nina. Um, anything airborne too. So that's why a lot of times in our practice, we do recommend um, apple cider vinegar. So one to two teaspoons. Um, before meals, uh, maybe 15 minutes before meals, that primes the stomach acid to uh, note that food is coming. It primes the stomach to get ready to receive food. So that, that's one thing that really helps. Um, really just calming down really, really helps um, that stomach acid levels. And something that I've been really experimenting with and Dr. Karen too is having bitters before meals. So I don't do it between every meal. I do it before uh, breakfast, and lunch, uh, breakfast and dinner. So it's a mixture of bitter herbs that stimulate digestion. So, you, I, so anything bitter will stimulate that stomach acid as well. And so I take that in the morning and in the evening, and it really kind of ramps up uh, my stomach acid levels. I know some people will use um, spices to do the same thing. So I've talked about this before, but with a person with a kind of weaker digestive system, they'll need something that kind of helps break down food and helps with the di digestion a little bit, and spices can do that. So you have to be careful, not every constitution can handle it especially if there's already been an acid issue, you may not be able to handle spices. That will just throw you over the top. Um, if there is a history of ulcers, you have to be very careful because that's really what I feel the proton pump inhibitors are intended for, is to give a person relief who's had stomach ulcers in order to give them time to heal. But now it's just, it's so widely prescribed and it's so, so dangerous because there are so many reasons why the person needs them and those reasons are never corrected. So. Apple cider vinegar is a good way, just relaxing before meals. Many of us are running, 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 and then we sit down and eat, and the stomach doesn't even know that food is coming. So that's a big stressor. Now that we're on quarantine, you know, a lot of us can maybe are cooking more at home, but you can smell the food being prepared. Um, you know that it's, it's there, it's being prepared that all primes the stomach acid because it takes um it takes a couple of hours for the digestive system to be primed that food is coming so us being at home really really could enhance digestion so it was low connection for a second we absolutely need to absorb minerals in order to keep our immune system functioning high um, minerals are almost more important than vitamins i would say so to me minerals make a huge difference for immune system and again, uh, this is never told to anyone, but the stomach acid, minerals are absorbed in the stomach and they need an acidic environment. So you need to have an acidic um, stomach acid to uh, absorb zinc, to absorb iron, to absorb magnesium, to absorb any mineral, calcium, so a lot of people take calcium, but they take it in with an antacid form, which there's that's just like totally ludicrous because you need an acidic stomach in order to absorb calcium. So to put it as like, you know, uh, an antacid plus calcium is totally like idiotic, really. You're not gonna absorb it and it's a total waste of money. You need an acidic stomach in order to absorb these vitamins. So being on a proton pump inhibitor for a long time, not only is the stomach acid levels suppressed because of that medication, but now you're not uh, able to fully and completely absorb the minerals from your food. And should you be taking a supplement as well, um, which is well intentioned, even from the supplement, it will be harder to absorb. So we need it. There's like iron, zinc, uh, magnesium, <clears throat> calcium, and magnesium, especially during times of stress, we are burning through our magnesium just as a process. Our nervous system needs it big time right now. And if there's a proton pump inhibitor, um, acid suppressing, so stomach acid suppressing medication, very hard to absorb the proper state of minerals. Now take that for somebody who's been on uh, acid suppressing meds for like 20 years. 
Um, I have seen you cannot correlate it, especially on a Facebook Live. I'm not going to claim this correlation at all. But what do you think their calcium absorption, their magnesium absorption is like? And what uh, symptoms do you think that they may have 20 years down the line? I've seen uh, heart issues. I've seen osteoporosis. Um, it's really serious. So when someone's on these pro uh, proton pump inhibitors indefinitely, it affects so much of the system. And then you've had like these meds for 20 years and then a person starts taking calcium as a supplement. That's not really going to do a lot because the whole system has been off track for that long. There's a lot to correct there. It's not a magic bullet cure that you can just take a calcium and then correct the um, correct the um, the the, the uh, mineral status of your bones. So this is a long time coming and it shouldn't have been a surprise to a person. Um, old school naturopaths, the forefathers, like I'm talking from the 1800s was always right that a sour stomach was protected for the, protective for the heart. So you'll notice even in um, Chinese medicine and a lot of Ayurvedic medicine, any of the heart medicines, it's usually like bitter melon or something bitter. So they knew that when you keep the stomach bitter or the acidic levels intact, um, it's heart healthy. So because you're absorbing your minerals when your stomach acid levels are um, on the proper level. This is key too. So many women I see are iron deficient, which is a mineral, so you can't absorb iron when your stomach acid is low. But in addition to that, your stomach acid um, levels when they are proper they help to release what's called intrinsic factor and intrinsic factor is needed to absorb b12 so many people have uh, b12 deficiencies and have iron deficiencies which b12 you need to help absorb iron but b12 is also needed to convert homocysteine which is um for heart health so in order to have energy we need to have proper stomach acid levels so now again take this person five ten years twenty years on the stomach acid suppressing medication they're not absorbing their iron they're not absorbing zinc which is you know protective for the immune system not absorbing magnesium which being in quarantine and a little bit of a higher stress i would say most of us are in we're ripping through our magnesium and so we need more anyways and we're not absorbing and then we're not absorbing B12 because the intrinsic factor is not stimulated to be released. So the last point I wanted to make about stomach acid is that when we eat food, when we chew it, um, the saliva helps to start breaking, break down the proteins. It's starting to physically break down the food um, by chewing and the mixing of saliva. The amylase is starting to break down sugars. As we swallow, the pieces of the larger food are broken up even more by the stomach acid. So what's happening here is the food is being uh, broken up even more by the acidity of the stomach acid and it's turning into a bolus of food and it's called the acidic chyme. So that acidic chyme needs to be as uh, uh, that chyme needs to be acidic. So as we're chewing and um, the stomach is churning, swallowing, um, the stomach has uh, received the food and it's uh, being mixed with stomach acid. The next step is to go into the digestive system. Then the pancreas is only triggered to release digestive enzymes to break down the food, the starches, the proteins even further when the chyme is acidic. So let's take a step back and if the stomach acid levels is suppressed, we're not breaking down our food as completely. The chyme is not acidic, it's not mixed with the proper amount of acid and therefore now as the food's hitting our gut, we're not having the pancreas uh, break, release the enzymes to break down the food even further and so this food is going through our gut and we are gassy, we are um, belching tons, there's more flatulence, there's distension, there's bloating, there's discomfort and now you have a whole host of an irritated gut. Um, Plus, it's more susceptible to viruses and bacteria. 
Now it might be more susceptible to diarrhea because this food is an irritant because it's not broken down properly or maybe even constipation. So as food is now stuck in the gut, now the transit time is decreased and now you have even more uh, opportunity for bacteria to start to overgrow like small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Um, any of those bacteria in the gut um, have more opportune time as that digestive system is just not happy. So then here you have a person on proton pump inhibitors. They're trying to suppress their acid. Their digestion is still total crap. And now they have to buy uh, digestive enzymes to take that and probiotics, which probiotics, even if the gut was good, I would say to take it. But now you're taking digestive enzymes and maybe other things to soothe your tummy all because the stomach acid was not correct. And if you think even further, aside from eating the food and the pH of the stomach acid, killing the virus, bacteria, whatever it is, now you're entering the gut, which is 80% of our immune system, 80% in our small intestines, it's called the gut associated lymphoid tissue is residing in the gut. And now your gut is totally, totally irritated. And now we have impacted 80% of our immune system. So you can see how it's a total, total domino effect and it's not just a benign thing to take. And it's very serious when it comes to um, the, the immune system. So stomach acid, as the forefather said, the sour stomach is really very protective for the immune system. I'm not talking about anything specific that's going on in our current reality right now. I don't know if it treats that strain or that's not what we're talking about at all. But when we're talking about people freaking out about our immune system, we have to know that our body is highly, highly primed 24 seven to re receive and um, interact with uh, viruses, bacteria, fungus, um, outer pathogens 24 seven. And it's, it's intricate, intricately, inti intimately, intimately um, designed each step of the way to protect us. Um, our skin is protective, uh, our nose is protective, the saliva is protective, the stomach acid, the, uh, the probiotic, the good bacteria in our gut, the lymph tissue, you know, all of that is hugely, hugely primed to protect us 24 seven. But leaving ourselves in a vulnerable state with stomach acid um, being lower, that is something that I would always say to correct. And it's not something that you can just be on and forget about it. To me, that is a red flag. Um, it's setting the stage for some serious, serious illnesses um, in the future. And if I'm wrong, then great, but we're still being proactive. So. Um, now you've entered the gut, there's gas bloating, all that, and then there's more supplements, or now you have to see a gastroenterologist because you have IBS and it's not correcting, or whatever it is, and now you're trying to buy probiotics online. But all of that is disrupted because of the one, disrupting that one step in this beautiful orchestra of um, digestion. So that's really what I wanted to talk about for stomach acid in the immune system. Starting off slowly just at home is literally slow down, be present with your food, turn the TV off while eating, do not even like have the TV on an hour before eating, um, just be present, sit and talk with the family. If you have little kids, you have to run after them, it's at least turn the TV off and eat. Um, have a little bit of apple cider vinegar. I would say about two teaspoons and a quarter cup water right before the meal. Um, try to um, smell the food and note that it's coming. Be relaxed when you eat. That's just so important. Make sure you get good rest. Turn your router off at night while you're sleeping to allow your body to even um, more deeply sleep and uh, repair. Um, if we're still allowed to go for walks, go for a walk outside because it resets the nervous system. Connection to nature um, allows us to get out of the house with um, just the balancing of Wi-Fi um, in our home 24-7. It, it's a good reset and um, if you can get bitters that would be great um, we are starting to carry them at Brio but um, we haven't fully started to bottle them up yet but we do have them um, if you can get some off of you know even Amazon if you're ordering um, you can look for Canadian bitters 
Um, but I do like um, formulating my own. I think it, the potency of it is a lot better. So um, I've come up with a formula that works pretty, pretty good. Uh, does anyone have any questions about stomach acid? Does this make sense? Um, does it shed light on how important um, stomach acid is and how we're just taught, taught about it totally wrong? We're taught to think about it totally wrong. Um, you can throw up some, some hearts, some likes, if this makes sense. Um, but really what you can do at home right now is just slow down when you eat, be present with your meal, chew properly, chew it. If you chew it only two, three times and swallow, maybe chew it six times, double it. So Jeanette Lee has just popped on. Hi, Jeanette. Um, so Donna gave a thumbs up. It makes sense. Um, Nina says emotions are huge. Emotions for sure are huge. If you're uh, one that processes emotions in the gut and specifically in the stomach. Um, Niru says thank you for sharing this important information. You're so welcome. Um, Donna says it makes sense. It totally makes sense, doesn't it? Like it's just something that is right in front of our face and it's common sense. Um, and, it, and it's just, you know, we can't just go in and egoically plug in things in our body and suppress things. The ramifications of it are like 20, 30, 40 steps down the line. It will trickle effect through everything. And um, when we're talking about a highly primed uh, immune system, you cannot afford to do anything with the digestion to, to mess with it. Um, when the stomach acid levels are off, I've seen people with rosacea, their skin uh, is red, um, you can have red patches on the torso, um, that's all because the stomach acid levels are totally suppressed in those patients and so you gotta get it back on track, gotta get their immune system back on track and um, breaking down food and finding out what foods <clears throat> suit us really. Any other questions or comments before we jump off? Um, my cousin Rita just signed up. Oh, before we leave, um, I am on again on Monday and um, we are doing something a little bit different and the time wasn't posted, but I'm gonna have um, hopefully the next uh, e newsletter email that goes out, the time will be posted. So it is four o'clock, we're meeting again four o'clock and there's a homework to watch on Netflix. Hopefully whoever of you have Netflix is to watch Netflix, watch Chef's Table season three, the first episode with Jiang Kwan and watch that come up with three points you can even take notes as you're watching but come up with three points of what she shares what you learned and how you can incorporate it in your life throughout this quarantine and in and beyond so it'll be more of a kind of interactive facebook live i'm going to watch it again i've watched it before um, the cinematography in it is stunning. Um, the lessons that she shares is invaluable. I find that um, I, I also kind of follow her philosophy, but with naturopathic medicine, she does it through food. You just have to watch it. It is so, so amazing. So she's using, I won't even talk about it. I want to talk about it right now, but I'm trying not to. So just watch it. Um, it's so, so amazing. And we'll do kind of like a more lighter, fun um, Q and A, um, talking about that and how it can get us through this quarantine time because she's just so incredible. So that's Chef's Table, Netflix, Season one, season three, episode one, Jiang Kwan, and uh, watch it before Monday at 4 p.m., which is when I'm popping on again. And um, bring your questions, bring your comments. I want it to be interactive, and instead of just me kind of talking the whole time, which I don't mind, I will talk the whole time if need be, but um, it would be great to hear everyone who pops on. I wanna hear your three lessons that you learned. Before I log off for today, is there any questions regarding the stomach acid, steps, initial steps, um, worries, anything that makes sense, doesn't make sense uh, before we log off? Anything, anything? All right, I don't know if there's a delay, but um, I don't see any further questions. So having said that, please be safe, everyone. Continue to uh, self-quarantine. We're doing a great job, and the more diligent we can be, uh, the quicker we flatten this curve, and the quicker we get to interact and give um, 
a friend a hug or a parent a hug or whoever a hug and just you know be more social um, but during this time we're being asked to uh, just go within learn as much as we can um, and and we're doing a great job so whoever's helping out and Donna gives a, a thank you and my cousin Rita gives a thank you um, Carrie Lee says, thank you, Dr. Nitu, miss you guys. We definitely uh, miss you guys. So Nina is asking, where can I get the bitters? I don't know if Bulk Barn is open. I don't know. So I haven't been to that side of the plaza just because of being uh, quarantined. But Bulk Barn in Ironwood does have one called Canadian Bitters. Um, it's a pre-made. I don't love that as much, but you can, it's good for now. Um, when things are back open, I can give you a formula we have in the clinic and I can give you that. Um, you can try on Amazon too. So Bulk Barn is open. Okay, so Nina says Bulk Barn is open. There's one called Canadian Bitters. I have yet to use it, but Dr. Karen had great success with it. Um, it's called Canadian Bitters and you can do that as directed. Oh, Bulk Barn is not open. Okay, so conflicting maybe it's reduced time I don't know um, but you can try to find there if not I would have to say probably uh, an online vitamin store is your best bet I think Finlandia is still open on West Broadway you can check Finlandia so Sandeep just popped on hi Sandeep um, you can check Finlandia Pharmacy on West Broadway. They are shipping out. Uh, Vitamin House, I believe in Victoria, they're quite good and their prices are quite good. You can check them and, and they should be shipping out. Um, and if not, Amazon. So you can check for bidders on Amazon. And then once we're open, I can give you a proper formula that I like. Um, yeah, and we can do that. Just to give you a few herbs that I like and what to look for, I like um, Taraxacum, which is dandelion. Um, I like milk thistle. I like Jen Chen. Um, but even as your home, just experiment with bitter foods. We always shy away from bitter foods. Um, it's just historically in us to think that bitter foods are dangerous. Um, but if you can find them at the grocery store, get like uh, arugula is bitter. Experiment with maybe a bitter melon. That's bitter. Um, the, hence the name. Um, in Indian food, there is a dish that's made with bitter melon. It's one of my favorites, but it's such a good digestive. Um, dandelion greens, I don't know if they're out right now, but that's a bitter. So experiment with a little bit of bitter foods too, and that can help in the meantime. So try for those online stores. Nina, that's a good question, and it can get you through. They're pre-mixed, which they may not be as potent um, as having someone formulate it for you, but it's a good option for now so it will really help your immune system help your digestive system does that help any other questions I think that's it so stay stay safe everyone um, have a great weekend indoors um, enjoy there's so many people doing great things on Facebook live and free courses and stuff so just enjoy be safe and I will see you guys on Monday with our homework. Don't forget, it's gonna be fun. All right, thank you everyone. Bye.